Welcome to another episode of the BDSM United podcast. Uh, this is another in our series called Types of Play. I'm Primal Piggy. You can find me on Facebook at The Primal Piggy, all one word, or as the admin of a rather large Facebook page, about 120,000 followers. Uh, you can find that on Facebook at WCDT BDSM. That stands for Whips, Chains, and Duct Tape. So, Jumping right in, make sure that you're, if you have the opportunity that you're watching this on YouTube, you can find that link uh, on my Facebook page, but it you can find us by searching Primal Piggy. Uh, there are many different types of paddles. We're going to show you some out of our personal collection today. They can come in different sizes, shapes, materials. Some are wood. They're... Uh, some are leather. I'll show you this one. This one right here. Some are leather, uh, leather covered wood. Some are plastic, and some are even metal. There's a plastic one, by the way. There's a plastic one right here. Um, and so, um, some have raised designs on them, and some have holes in them. Here's one with holes. Some have holes in them or studs embedded in them. Uh, paddles are usually solely for spanking the buttocks and the thighs. You can use them in other, in other places, but due to their heavier weight, they strike harder upon impact and can be physically dangerous to strike in a less padded area. The holes in some paddles, such as this one right here, um... They increase the airspeed, therefore increasing the strength with which the paddle lands. The holes will leave a dotted design on the skin, a red patch with white unmarked circles or places in it. These circles are where the holes hit the skin. Uh, the, the thing is, the edges of these circles may welt or bruise. Uh, the paddles with studs in them, which I don't have one here on me, but um, they create darker spots where the studs hit the skin. And these spots may bruise upon impact and may even, they may even scrape depending on what type of studs they are. Uh, some of these studs can break the skin immediately as well. So be careful. Uh, paddles can be small enough to strike only one buttocks with each blow or large enough to strike the entire bottom at once. Paddle leg. A paddle like this right here uh, is good for hitting one buttocks, but something larger, like this one right here, I can hit both buttocks at the same time with this. It's long enough, long enough to, to do that. Um, crops. Crops come in different lengths and designs as well. They're kind of like paddles. Here is a riding crop right here. Crop right here. It's the different lengths right here. This is one of my favorites right here. Uh, the tips are usually what is used to strike the skin. Is it which one? Put it right there. And the, the tips are called slappers. They have different whips, widths from thin to wide. This one's rather thin, but uh, you know, they make them in a wider variety as well. And they can be squared or pointed. The tips can be a single strip of leather or one that's doubled, doubled over, like this one right here. They can be stiff or floppy. Uh, this one's rather stiff. You can find crops made of both leather and plastic. And depending on the type of the material it's made of and the size of the slapper and its stiffness is how much pain it can inflict. Um, this one right here is out of our personal collection. It's one of my favorite ones here. And it is, um, because the tip is pretty small, you can really hit, uh, you know, it's great for like genitals or you can hit nipples or you can hit anything really small with it. And uh, it's rather stingy. And so it's got quite a bit of, quite a bit of pop to it. And with a crop, you don't need a lot of action. You don't need to really hit, you just use... The turn of the turn of your wrist is really the good technique. The turn of the wrist, similar to a cane, and um, 
you you can also if you can target similar similar to a flogger would you can do like the bow and arrow where you hold the end and Anyway, so crops can be used on a variety of areas on the body. The strength of each blow should be tailored to the part of the body being struck. Buttocks, thighs, calf, and feet can usually take a stronger strike, though the amount of pain inflicted will vary on each part. Calves and thighs and feet are usually more sensitive than buttocks. Breasts, genitals, and shoulders in the back can be struck as well, but the blow should be a lot lighter. Um, so you want to definitely vary it because it can get painful really quickly. The, the head of the crop will easily leave marks, uh, which can bruise. And these marks are patches of red about the size of whatever the slapper is. So these you leave kind of red, it's, uh, light red or uh, smaller red marks. A squared slapper has a bit less impact than one with a thinner and and uh, or one that ends in a point, one that's pointed, frayed, braided, or otherwise designed for increased pain will hurt a lot more. There's some that have uh, these little what they call vampire uh, little vampire studs on the end, and so that can that kind of uh, uh, prickle on the skin. And then there's ones that are studded and things similar like paddles. Welts will also form where the edges of the slapper strikes the skin. And in some cases, the edges can be abrasive or cut the skin. These marks can take more time to go away, and many of the red spots will form bruises. Uh, the shaft of the crop can be used as a cane for the buttocks or the thighs. Just be careful when using the crop in this manner, as the tip you know, has a tendency to wrap around and snap hard against the skin, which can create damage, like unintended damage. Uh, so you can use it a little bit like a cane, but um, this one's rather flimsy, so I wouldn't really use it like a cane. I would use a cane as a cane. But if you don't have a cane, a crop, you know, can come, it can uh, serve somewhat of a dual purpose. So slappers and straps are another kind of toy used for pain play. I don't currently have one here with me. Um, uh, slappers are usually like a heavy leather straps that are split on one end. Uh, upon impact, the first flap hits the skin and the second flap lands on the first one, creating a slapping sound. Uh, sort of like a double hit upon the same spot at the same time. They can be kind of loud, so you want to just take that into account as well. And straps are exactly that, straps of leather. And this includes belts and if I was going to use something, I would just use my leather belt. Um, these can have holes, studs, or other designs on them, and they're usually three-quarters of an inch wide or more. Straps and slappers can be used on many different areas of the body. Again, the strength of the blows should be tailored to the st spot being struck. Uh, they are more versatile than paddles. Um, and oftentimes, people uh, own a belt before they own a paddle. So they're sometimes more widely available. There's another type of strap with a specific name. It's called a toss. This is like a slapper, but rather than a double flap for the end, uh, like a slapper. A slapper is similar to the end of my crop where there's one piece on top of the other piece like that. And so when you slap, one, the top one, the bottom one hits first and then the top one hits the bottom. But with a toss, they're like they're like your two fingers. They're side by side, uh, uh, and uh, uh, this is like a slapper, but rather than a double flap for the end, it's a single layer that's cut part ways along its length, with usually two to four slits creating tails that look like flint, fringe. Each tail will strike a slightly different area upon impact. These slits also allow more airspeed, which allows the user to create more sting with less effort. And the fringe will strike the skin with more sting, the same way as spreading the fingers during a hand spanking uh, increases the pain. Uh, you may enjoy the, very sen the varied sensation that crops, slappers, and straps can create on your skin. 
depending on where the blow is landed and the strength behind it. The strike can either arouse you or it can cause real pain. Uh, Paddles, while popular, are not everyone's favorite toys. Uh, Some restrict their use just for punishment. Uh, On your skin, the pain of a paddle may last longer than with anything else uh, because of their heaviness. The area struck will also bruise as the redness fades. And so uh, if you don't want to risk bruises, then paddles may not be the best choice for you. Now, any of these items can be used as a means of warming you up for heavier play. A warm-up is often necessary for someone to be able to really enjoy pain play or impact play rather than to feel real pain. Uh, Bruises from crops, paddles, and straps may take longer for your body to heal. Uh, If you don't typically bruise easily, uh, these are deeper in the skin on the body. So these... You know, these are pretty, they can be pretty deep bruises. As with any type of play, be careful with what you're doing and learn the proper places to strike before hitting someone. Uh, Many of these toys can cause permanent physical harm with the very first strike, depending on how hard you hit, where you hit, who you are. Uh, You can do a simple Google search to find a diagram of the human body which shows the proper places to hit and even shows what the marks of the different toys can look like on the skin. Be aware that crops and straps like whips and floggers require a wide area to swing them in because they're usually longer than most paddles. Make sure you have adequate adequate room to use them safely. Here's an example. So here's my my uh, crop. Is, let's get a camera frame here. The crop, the crop is really long where my paddle is rather short. We were talking about warming things up. Uh, here's uh, a paddle that I like to use for warming things up. On one side, it is a hard. One side, it's a hard surface. The other side, it's a very padded surface. I think. Hopefully, that you can hear the difference. Hard and padded. And so the padded, while it may seem like it's not much. It can really, um, it can be useful. This padding can be useful for warming up the skin because it's not about causing pain. It's about getting, uh, getting the skin, uh, getting the endorphins and getting the skin prepared and kind of reddened up a little bit for something more intense. It's one of my favorites here. So this one's a lot more intense. It's leather. It's very got a. It's very hard. Uh, this and this it's actually a little bit stingy, which is good. This one right here is a little. Uh, this is a wooden one. It gets a little bit of sting to it because of it wood, but it's also rather blunt, so it's kind of thuddy as well at the same time. Um, and so leaves really really red marks. Uh, really hard wood paddle. Uh, here's one right here is um. This is a rather inexpensive paddle. You can see it's just a thin piece of uh, of plastic, and uh, it's very rubbery. It's going to leave a, a, a quite. It's going to be quite stingy, and it is really bendy. So it can. I don't know if that's the official word, but it's very bendy, very bendable, and so you can get a lot of good slapping with it without a lot of need. You can just use your wrist. And get a lot of pops with it, and then this is a actually a rather expensive leather paddle here. I think this is from uh, LVX, so it's very intricately designed. And so this is a a leather paddle with a wooden handle, and uh, it's quite thuddy with just a little bit of sting, and but it's quite hard, quite hard leather. It doesn't bend very much, so. Those are just a few in our collection. Remember to play safe and have fun. uh, Experiment and be sure to look that up on Google to see uh, where. uh, And I'll try to put something on our Facebook page at the Primal Piggy, all one word, to show the the places that you should hit and the places you shouldn't. 
Um, a big place to avoid is the kidneys. That's a big place to avoid. Uh, they're really close to where you're hitting anyways with a paddle and so or with a flogger, but they're they're to be avoided. Uh, I'm Primal Piggy. Again, you can find me on Facebook at the Primal Piggy, all one word, at Whips, Chains, and Duct Tape at WCDT BDSM. And also find this on the web at www.bdsmunited.com. If you're listening on your favorite platform, be sure to uh, like, subscribe, uh, leave a review. Um, it, for one thing, it lets you connect with us. But another thing, it helps spread the word about these uh, podcasts so that other people can uh, find this educational material. Thank you for listening today.